Okay, so let's fill in what all these are in this lovely formula. So we've got A of T, which is the end amount. So like after a certain amount of time, it's the end amount of whatever you're talking about. A of T. And then A naught is the initial amount. That's what you're starting with. And T is the time. And K is a constant that you are going constant that you are going to store in your calculator. Sto. All right. And you want to know just kind of in general that exponential growth looks like this. So it starts out really, really slow, and then it just increases, increases, increases. So this would be like the population of bunnies if there's no wolves around. Okay. And then we have exponential decay. So this is growth. And this is decay. So decay is like when you take a Tylenol and then after like a certain amount of time you have less and less of that Tylenol in your body. All right. Number one. The number of bacteria present at noon was 400. Nine hours later, the bacteria numbered 800. The bacteria is increasing. Assuming exponential growth, find the amount of bacteria present at noon the following day. So we have A sub T equals A naught E to the K times T. Um, so when it says the number of bacteria present at noon was 400, that's going to be our starting point because they didn't give us any time before that. So that means that 400 is our initial amount. And then it gives you another point. So they usually give you the initial amount and then they give you like a time and an end amount. So now it says the bacteria are nine hours later, the bacteria numbered 800. So we can plug in a point in order to find K. So we have an end amount of 800 after nine hours. Okay, so you leave K in the equation. So the first thing we do is figure out what our constant K is. Always isolate E first, so you have to divide by 400 first. So 800 divided by 400 is 2, and we have E to the K times 9, and then we need to get rid of E. How do we get rid of E? Yep, we take the natural log of both sides. All right, so I have the ln of 2 equals k times 9, and then we divide by 9 on both sides, and we're going to store k as this lovely thing right here. So I'm going to plug that in. I have the ln. i to turn off my smart notebook. All right, so I have the ln of 2. So you guys, a lot of people mess up right here because they divide when they're inside the parentheses. you got to get out of the parentheses and then divide by 9. Press enter, and we want to store this as k. So right here above your vars key, it says sto. So you press control sto, and we're going to store it as k. Boom. Did everyone do that on their calculators? All right. You guys grab a calculator if you haven't grabbed one yet, because you're going to need it anyways. All right, so let's go back to where we were in our problem. So now it says, um, find the amount of bacteria present at noon the following day. So the whole point of this beginning part is to find K and store K. All right, so now we start the party over. I want to find A of, and we're finding 24 hours later because it says at noon the next day. So that's really A of 24. And so I still start with 400. And I'm going to actually leave this as K, even though K is what we just figured out, that decimal number. And now I'm going to plug in 24 for time because it's 24 hours later. So we can plug that whole thing into our calculator, 400. And now I use E. And I'm going to plug in K times 24 into the exponent. Press Enter, and we get... 2,539, and I think my calculator may not be showing all the decimal places. So, 
we get 2,539.842. I missed a nine, you guys. Bacteria. All right, I do want a sketch of the graph. All I really need is that the initial amount is 400, and then you have exponential growth. Okay, let's try number two. So the number of penguins in a population started at 1,200, which reminds me of a joke. What do you call a penguin when walking around the desert? Lost. Okay. After 100 days, there were 2,700 penguins. Yes. Assuming exponential growth, find the amount of time required to reach 30,000 penguins. Okay, so we start with our formula. Yes, you should write this formula down. And now we're going to plug in A0. Let's go with Carson. What do you think is the initial amount? Yep, so we're plug in 1,200. We're always solving for K first. So then it says after 100 days, there were 2,700 penguins. So that means I plug in my 27 here for the end amount, and that was after 100 days. Now we start solving for K. Marcus, what do I do next to solve for K? Divide by 1,200. Okay, and that gives me 2.25. And Tim, what do I do next? Okay, uh, we take the natural logs, so we cancel the E. And then we would divide by 100, right? And be careful in your calculator when you plug this in. So we're going to do the ln of 2.25, get out of the parentheses, and divide by 100. <coughs> Press enter. And then store it as K. All right, now we go back and read the rest of the problem. Now, this one's different than the last one, all right? So, assuming exponential growth, find the amount of time, T, we're finding time, required to get to 30,000 penguins. So, this time when I go back and plug in, I'm going to plug in my end amount. I'm trying to find T, I know the end amount is 30,000 penguins. So, I do 30,000 equals, I still started with 1,200 e to the k which I just stored and we are solving for t. That's what we're trying to find. So now I want to solve. So Evan, what's the first step to solve for t? Well, you would divide both sides by 1200. I agree with you. I would also divide both sides by 1200. So 30,000 divided by 1200 is 25. And then I have e to the k times t. And Harrison, what would you do next to uh, get t by itself? Thanks, Evan. I would take the natural log. Good. Um, so then I'm still solving for t. So, Dylan, the next step would be what? Divide by k, which we just stored, right? So now I'm going to do on my calculator the ln of 25, get out of the parentheses, and I'm going to divide by k. 396.8. <laughs> that is a great number. And our time units in this problem is in days. Now, a long time ago, you probably don't remember, like maybe back in September, um, we actually graphed to solve these. Mm, yes. I would like to show you how to do that. So you guys, everyone do this on your calculator. You might have to, so I recommend doing it. Yep. So first you're going to plug in the right-hand side of the equation, which was 1,200 times E. And it doesn't have, does it still have K stored when we go to graph? I don't know if it does. So I'm going to plug in, oh, it does. Oh, that's so great. So K, that's nice. And then... I'm going to use x for t, as long as, Marcus, you're, you're nodding yes, so I'm, I hope you're right, that it's still stored k. Oh, Marcus. 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 <laughs> oh. 
Did yours work? Oh, okay. I'm gonna actually plug in K. So we found K to be the ln of 2.25 and then divided by 100. Be sure you get out of those parentheses. And then I'm gonna times by X, which is my T. That's just my variable. And I'm gonna press enter. I can't see anything. So we're all gonna change our window together. Make sure you're not working on example three and that you are um, following along right now with me. Okay. Oh, do you have a question, Stella? Start recording. So go to menu and go to window and go to window settings. We're going to do it ourselves because we already know the answer anyways. So you guys, the X represents time. And what was the time that we got as our answer? 396. So maybe I'll just go to like 400. And the Y represents the number of penguins. So the most we had was 30,000, right? That's what we're trying to get to. I'm going to go to 40,000. Yeah, I'm just going to go a little past that. Press OK. Look at that lovely exponential growth graph. Now, what I need to find is when it gets to 30,000, so pay attention, you press tab, and you plug in just 30,000 as a straight line. So that's where Y is 30,000. And I want to find this tiny point here where they cross. So we go to Menu, Analyze Graph, Intersection, left of it, right of it, and you should get, oh no, I'm running out of room, the same answer that you just got. Okay? So it's 397 something days, 30,000 penguins. That is a lot of penguins. They rounded. I have a rounded on my calculator. Okay, so we just did some exponential growths. Uh, by the way, what I would like to see in your picture, we started at 1,200 and we went up, and then we had that line at 30,000 right here. That's where it crosses at 396 days. All right. Harrison? So the initial amount of guacamole was 400 pounds, and then Miss Nishida showed up, and after 90 minutes, there was 380 pounds left. Uh, assuming exponential decay, determine when half the guac remains. This is really important because we're going to talk about half-life here. The beginning of this is easy, but then you have to do the half-life part, okay? So let's start with our formula, A of T equals A O E to the K times T. And we got to plug some stuff in. So Stella, what should I plug in for A naught? 400 pounds. Good. And then it says after 90 minutes, there were 380 pounds. So, Aaron, what should I plug in for this end amount? Good. And, Jake, what should I plug in for the time first? Good. Now I just need to solve. So, let's divide by 400 first. And that gives me 0.95. Um, all right, and Peyton H., what's the next step? Yep, we take the natural log, technically, since it's a function. And then we divide by 90 to get k by itself. And we're going to store that in our calculator. So we've got, whoops, go back to calculate. So I have the ln of 0.95. Be sure you get out of the parentheses, divided by 90, press enter, and I'm going to store it as K. Okay, assuming exponential decay, determine when half the guac remains. This is really important, and I don't know if you learned this last year or not. So. Basically, we want to know when we get half. How much time until you have half? So, we started with 400. What should I put on the other side of the equation this time? 
Yeah, half-life always means half of what you started with. So I can put 200 equals 400 e to the k times t because now I'm trying to find t. By the way, does it even matter? Could I also put a 1 and a 2 right here? Yeah, could I actually just put a 1 half right here no matter what? Yeah, if you divide by 400, it's always equal to a half. So you can actually pick any starting amount and put half on the other side, and it's half-life, okay? So now I can plug this in. Now I need to take the ln of both sides and divide by k that we just stored in our calculator. So I'm going to do the natural log of 0.5, or 1 half, and I'm going to get out of the parentheses and divide by k. Press enter, and we get 1,216.207. So t equals 1,216.207 minutes is time for this one. Okay, for your graph, I don't need to see a lot, you guys, but is this growth or decay? So you're starting with a lot, the 400, and you're ending down here with a lot less. Okay, so it needs to look like exponential decay. All right. Last one. That I don't know if you guys know this either. This definitely was not in the Algebra 2 book. So... Uh, a radioactive material decays exponentially. After 100 years, 500 grams are left. After 200 years, 300 grams remain. Find the initial amount of material and then find the half-life. They don't give you an initial amount. That's what's different about this one. So I've got two formulas. So I have A of T equals A O E to the K T, right? And we do know after 100 years, there's 500 grams. So I can plug in 500 for my end amount and 100 for my T. I also know one other thing. I know that 300, because after 200 years, 300 grams remain. So I can also plug in 200 for my time. And that's when 300 grams remain. Okay, so we want to find a naught. We can actually divide exponential functions. I don't know if you guys remember this, but you can divide an entire function by an entire function. Um, I'm going to put the smaller one on the top because that's how I did it in my notes, but I think you can divide in whatever order you want. So I'm going to take 300 equals a naught e to the k times 200 divided by 500 equals a naught e to the k times 100. So when I divide, I divide 300 by 500, and I get 0.6. Okay, then I divide a naught by a naught. Those, like, just cancel out. It's, like, just one, right? And then when you're dividing exponents, so just a little reminder. Like, let's say you have x to the fifth divided by x squared. What's that equal to? Good job. What did we do with these numbers? Okay, that's exactly what we're doing here. We have the same base of e. And I have 200k minus 100k. That's the same thing. And that I just subtract and I get 100k. I'm going to put the 100 in front. And now we can find our k. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And I'm going to divide by 100. Once you plug that in, you guys, you get your K and you store it. And we can solve now for A. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And I'm going to store it. Oh, no. All right, 
So now, you guys, we have K. You can go back to either equation and find a naught. So I'm just going to take this equation right here, and I'm going to solve by dividing by this whole thing. So I have 300 equals a naught e to the k times 200. We now know k, so I can actually plug this in and get a number. This is like equal to a value, and I can divide 300 by this. Everybody good with dividing by that whole thing? Sure, whatever you say. So we'll divide by e to the k times 200. So go back to your calculator, and we're going to do 300 divided by e to the k that we just stored times 200. And we get A. All right. So we found our initial amount. That's what A naught is. So A naught equals 833.333. That was part of what we were trying to do. But this problem's not over. It's, it's never over. So we found the initial amount. Now find the half life. Okay. When it says find the half life, you guys, and we're just doing this formula. You can put in any two numbers that give you half, right? Like I could be like, okay, I'm going to start with 100. That means I'm going to end with 50. It doesn't matter. When you divide, you're going to get 0.5. Make sense? So however you want to do half-life. And then I have E. And we're figuring out how much time it takes to get to the half-life. So K times T, we're solving for T. So if I divide by 100, I get 0.5. So we didn't even need the initial amount, right? We didn't even need that to find the half-life. So now I do the natural log. So I take the natural log of 0.5, and I divide by K, which should already be stored in your calculator. So the natural log of 0.5 divided by k, 135.692. Are we in years on this problem? 